Today I'm going to show you how to paint rocks. Hi everyone, Steve Elliott here again. This is a watercolour painting of a rocky scene and I'm going to show you how to paint this step by step. I'm going to be using my own watercolour brushes with this and also the HB pencil that uh, is default in Procreate. So I'm beginning with that HB pencil. I'm working on the first layer which is just going to hold the pencil drawing and nothing else. I'm making fairly heavy lines, but that doesn't matter because I can change the opacity of this layer once I've got the sketch on there. So I could have been a little bit more delicate perhaps and done a much lighter sketch, but I, I thought I'll, I'll do it quite heavy. I can see where I'm going and then I can just knock the opacity back um, as it suits. I think what you will notice here is in reality, I sketch at a lot lower, a lot slower pace than what you probably imagine. And you can see there, I'm sort of fiddling away and drawing quite slow and meticulously. Although I'm not sort of measuring anything out too accurately or trying to be too precise uh, with the sketch, because this is an exercise really. And I'm just using it as a guideline and I'll probably make things up as I'm going along. But um, I just want to show you the process of how um, I would sketch this out. Um, you know, when if you've followed my channel, you will know that if I'm doing watercolours or acrylics or anything like that, I don't sketch at all. I just go straight in the painting. But with watercolour, I always do a sketch first. And I think that sort of goes back to my um, painting with real watercolours. I always used to sketch things out. In fact, when I finished this painting, I sent it to uh, my daughter to see what she thought of it because I usually run things by her. I, I respect her uh, judgment. And I said, what do you think to this one? And she says, it's very retro, Dad, very retro. I said, what do you mean retro? She says, this looks like one of your paintings from years ago when you was doing watercolour. It's just in that style, which I haven't seen you do, do for such a long time. So I guess it is. It is, um, which is a real compliment because that is exactly what I was trying to do when I was doing this. I was thinking back to uh, the old watercolour paintings I used to use. And you'll see that in the sky. This isn't just a, a tutorial on how to paint rocks. Um it will be a tutorial on uh, how to paint sort of dramatic skies very quickly and very easily. And also how to be sort of fast and loose with your foregrounds. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on them as well. Um, I, I was a bit concerned as I was working on this, that this was going to sort of run into hours and it was going to take me a long time to, actually get it done when I was working on the rocks but once I got to the foreground it literally took minutes so um, it, it's all coming under less than an hour and that, that is real time from start to finish of the painting so that is my sketch layer I'm going to write a sketch on that I don't lock it at this point and I think that's because I wanted to change the opacity and I didn't want to be unlocking it again later so I'm now going into my Steve Elliott Art watercolour brushes and I'm going to choose the Wet in Wet Wash One brush. Adjust the size. And I made a colour palette of colours that I felt I would be using in this. And I pretty much stick to them to the most. Um, I, on odd occasions, I've selected a colour off this palette and then um, just changed the uh, saturation by pushing it up more towards the pure colour. So you notice there, I begin by putting in a mustard colour or, and then an orange colour over the top, glow around the um, rock face. And now I'm going into a pale blue, which could be a cobalt, cobalt blue if you was using paint. And I'm just sort of going around the edge of that, all with this wash one brush. This is all on one layer, uh, a separate layer above the sketch layer. I'm just sort of softening that in. And then we go in with the blue colour, the 
guess this could be an ultramarine and darken that up a little bit more around the edges. So you can see we're getting quite a dramatic sky and we've done this in seconds really. Just sort of fiddling a little bit and adding a little bit more colour. Then I decided to go over the rocks, which probably was a mistake because I ended up lifting that out. Oh, I actually lifted it out there or deleted it, I should say, or used the back button. Get a bit of um, <clears throat> colour on the rocks. I guess I'm going to choose the orange colour now. I, I did. Because this voiceover goes on after I've actually painted the picture. I can't, I've tried talking while I'm painting and I can't do it. I can't concentrate on the two things. I'm a bloke. I can't multitask. So I have to do the voices over after. Uh, I'm really tempted to have a go at um, streaming. But I don't know if it would be very entertaining because I wouldn't speak much while I was working. Um so I find this way a lot easier. So I've got that sort of warmer colour in the foreground of the rocks. So that is kind of all on one layer going off there. Notice I uh, select a green and then this would be like a hooker's green, I guess. And I, I've added that to the palette. Um, I'll, I think I'll probably put the codes for all of the colours for you to create the palette yourself. Or I may even upload, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll upload the palette. If you want to have a go at this painting, I'll upload the palette and the um, photograph as well, actually. If you fancy having a go at this painting yourself, I'll put that on, a link to that uh, below and it'll probably take you off to uh, my website for um, with a link to, to get that for obviously for free. Um, <clears throat> where, we, where are we at now? Oh, back into the sky again. Just strengthening that colour up. I felt it just needs a little bit more going in there. And now I'm creating another layer. So we've got three layers and I've changed that to multiply because I wanted to get a kind of uh, another wash over top of the initial wash that is going to be a bit darker. And you notice that I selected the colour and then actually uh, adjusted the colour to make it a little bit darker. So I'm, I'm, I'm still using the same hue uh, that's in the palette, but it would be like mixing a bit of Payne's Grey in, in with it or, or something like that. Because it's not really a, a proper way of mixing colours together in Procreate. So I've just sort of uh, beefed that sky up a little bit more. I felt it needed a little bit more colour in there. So, and then I decide we need a little bit of colour on the face of these rocks. So I put that in and then I take an eraser and, and sharpen up the edges of the side of the rock. And I, I kind of should have left it like that. Um, because although I, I got a clear view in my mind how this tutorial was going to work and how I'd got sort of layers set out in my head what was going to happen the painting process took over to some extent and I um, started to go with the flow and didn't really um, follow my game plan and here, this at this point my game plan has gone out of the window and I decide that I want a little bit of contrast against the, the sky and the rocks and I start lifting so I'm using the eraser and I've got the um, wash brush selected on the eraser I believe and then I, I use it fairly small to take out a sort of detailed edge and then I change the size of that brush to just soften it along the bottom a bit so we've got the light catching this rock face a little bit more and I still, I'm going to go back into the sketch layer now. And at this point, I felt that the lines were too dark and I needed to change the opacity of those. And you can see I knocked them right down there. 
So that's how they would appear on the finished photo, uh, painting, sorry, on the finished painting. So <clears throat> I'm choosing the ultramarine colour. I've got that wet in wet brush selected. And what am I going to do now? I think I start... I'm not sure. Oh, I've changed to the sea wash brush. I suspect I'm going to lock that pencil layer because I do not now need to touch that again and I don't want to go into it by mistake. I create a new layer above my multiply layer and I've got the sea wash brush selected and I think I'm going to start putting in some shadows. Yeah, here we go. So I start looking at the rocks and I'm, I'm going to start painting in shadows. This is above the um, multiply layer. Got the wrong brush selected there on the smudge tool. So I've changed it to uh, the wash brush, I believe. It just means I can smudge that paint out uh, and push it around a bit without having to keep adding more colour. Uh, so therefore I can sort of change the tone of it as I'm going. It's like, it would be like washing the paint out with uh, a damp brush with a little bit of water on it and diluting the paint as you go in by using that smudge brush. That's the idea of what's going off there. And then if I want some hard edges, I could select the eraser, which I have done there, look, and then sort of sharpen them back where it's necessary and maybe uh, cut it out, cut shapes out as well. <clears throat> so we, we're adding shadows and creating a bit of form to these rocks. I've got a sort of a, an ultramarine blue colour selected and I'm adjusting, you notice I'm adjusting the brush size all the time while I'm doing this. And it's on its own layer so I can um, not worry too much about damaging anything underneath. I can smudge, I can erase and cut into it without affecting anything below it. So when you're doing watercolours, it's it really is important to make sure you've got uh, lay pretty much everything on its own layer. When I'm doing oil paintings, if especially in art, art rage, you'll know that I'll work pretty much on one layer uh, uh, to finish the old painting. But with watercolour, you really do need to make uh, layers for pretty much everything. And the nature of the thing of watercolour uh, Using layers, the, uh, the watercolours isn't an opaque colour. It is translucent, so you can see the layers shining through below it. Uh, and so, again, that's important to use uh, use the layers for your watercolour. So I'm sort of carving in nooks and crannies into these rocks now by uh, painting these shapes in. And you can see when I'm, when it's the videos in real time like this, my painting is a lot more thought out than you probably would imagine uh, when you see a, a speed painting where it sort of whizzes whizzes along at a rate of knots. Here you can see there's moments where nothing's happening because I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next and where I'm going to put the next brush stroke. So you can see I'm painting in, if you look at the photograph, you can see I'm painting in those shadows of those rocks. Picking out those shapes and crevices and things, putting in finer lines, thicker lines, and I'll be uh, using the smudge brush to blend away. Overpainting as well, I've sort of gone into that with uh, the same colour again, going over the top of it. There we are. And then blending that off again. And I'll obviously use the eraser. There we go. Just to keep that edge nice and sharp. If I was doing a watercolour painting, I'd be doing exactly the same thing. I'd get a bit of tissue paper and push it up against the edge. 
where I wanted a sharp line to lift colour out. So it, it's all sort of, I know it's digital and everything, and it looks like you're using digital techniques that you can't use in real with real paint, but it's not. It's the same. It's just you're doing it digitally instead of with the t- uh, tips and tricks that you would use if you was painting with um, traditional watercolour paint. So you can see I changed my mind a lot. I put colours on, I lift them out, I put them back down again. So a lot more thoughtful than um, the speed paintings that you can see that there's a lot of thought processes going into this and less brush strokes than you probably imagine. I decided at this point that I wanted to um, add some colour into these rock faces so I've got the kind of mustard colour, which would be, I guess, yellow ochre. Or maybe raw sienna or something like that. And I start putting a little bit of colour into these faces. I mix it up a bit. I'm wondering what colour to choose there. I do go for um, a browner colour. So that would be um, burnt sienna. So I've, I've kind of put together a palette that would be my traditional watercolour palette. And I'm sort of uh, working with those colours. So I guess that's another reason why it looks like a, one of my tradi- more traditional watercolour painters, paintings from years ago. Because I'm using the same colour palette pretty much. And that was intentional. I, I chose those colours at the beginning to... Um, To be my traditional palette, if you like. Uh, that, that's what I was aiming at. So I decided at this point I need to zoom in a little bit on these rocks because I'm now going to start putting in some detail. And I've probably totally got mixed up with the layers at this point, which is something you should probably, if you have a go at this, be a little bit more aware of than I was uh, that I start getting, I'm um, working on layers underneath other layers and then creating another layer over it. So I've got kind of two layers there. You can see with, um, colors on for, um, for, um, adding washes and then another layer with the sort of line work on it. And I couldn't really merge them down. If you try and merge a multiplied layer onto, um, a layer that isn't completely opaque, in in other words, a layer that has got some colour on it, but not over the whole of it, it um, it gives off some strange, strange results. So I, I wasn't able to merge those layers down, and um, I should have probably named them and, and be a little bit more... Um, careful uh, and methodical in the approach that I came to this but this is this is how I am with everything if you ever see my desk in fact you will do because I'm doing a studio tour um, very very soon I've already recorded it and um, you will see how messy I am when I'm working and I guess that has like followed over into into my digital work and the way I work with layers that I'm not as um, tidy with them as I should be. So I encourage you to perhaps be a little bit more um, careful with the laying out of your layers than I am. So that doesn't say a lot about me. I'm now using the uh, glazing brush. And I guess I'm going to use that for putting in some uh, detail on these rocks. There we go. You can see um, it took me a while to work out which brushes I wanted to use for this. Uh, I used the glazing brush and I also used the rigger. The rigger brush in places as well. Uh, the rigor comes later when I start putting in the really fine lines.
this isn't going to be a photo realistic painting obviously it is clearly a watercolor interpretation of a uh, mound of rocks uh, i've changed the color to uh, the i guess this one would be um burnt umber a very dark brown it is, it is within the palette and I'm sort of going back. Although I'm still painting in shapes, I'm painting in shadows with it as well. And this is where I could have probably, um, been a bit more precise. I think, right, I'm painting shadows now. Go back onto the shadow layer because once, um, you start mixing shadows with the lines, you can't smudge. If you paint a line over the shadow, you can't change it, you can't smudge it out or soften it because you will affect the shadow as well. And it was me being lazy, I guess, that I, I didn't change the ladder. So bear that in uh, the layer, not the ladder, I don't know where ladder come from. So bear that in mind, if you have a go at this, that when you are painting shadows, even if you're using a smaller brush in the detailed shadows, either create a new layer for it or go back onto your shadows layer. Don't do what I did here. Although it does work, but it did um, cause me a few little problems when I had to start thinking uh, a little bit more carefully about what I wanted to blend out, and uh, I could I just couldn't do that uh, because I'd painted shadows on my line layer. Although you could argue there's no lines on it at, at this point; they're all shadows that uh, are painted onto the. Um, of the rocks. I haven't really got into painting all the fine little crevices and cracks and things in there yet. Maybe in that dark shadowed area a bit I have, but on the whole, I'm still sort of working on uh, lines which can clearly be defined as shadows rather than detail of the, or the surface of the rock. So I'm working on the right hand side, getting those sort of um, little crevices on the right there. You notice I've, I'm leaving, I'm not going to put much detail on the right hand side. When I, I do watercolours, I tend to leave a lot of space uh, and don't fill the old canvas or paper or screen with detail. I'll let, I'll let the person that's looking at the painting fill in that detail with them uh, themselves uh, with you know imagining what what would go in there rather than me painting all that detail in at the edges I just I'm really just doing the detail in the focal point and the main part of the uh, painting So you can see I'm working at a quite slow pace. Uh, I'm, it's actually watching this video back. It's surprising me at how slow I actually do paint. Um, because when you sort of thinking through the processes and what have you, things seem to move along a lot faster than uh, they are here while I'm watching this back. <clears throat> sort of working on a little bit of detail on that foreground rock. So you can see detail is going in now. And all the colours are going from sort of light to dark at the minute. And I'm still using that glazing brush. See, I'm sort of swapping over to layers now. I think I've probably realised the, the mistake that I've made with the layers, that I've not sort of um, been a little bit more um, careful about what I put where, because uh, I want to erase some of the colour, and I was struggling to find out which layer it was on, so maybe I should have labelled that up a little bit better.
So I've sort of, uh, this is the bit where I was sort of thinking, which layer is, is this bit I'm trying to erase on? And I'm jumping back two or three or four times. And you see, I keep flipping between layers just to erase one little mark. So I encourage you to be, um, a bit more careful with the layers. As I've said a dozen times already, I'm not going to say it again now. That's it. Eventually I do find it. There we go. So I can uh, erase that and now I'm back into choosing colors again and then back into painting. And you can see I'm now working across the rocks. And as I'm going, I'm adding detail and sort of uh, texture and form to these rocks just by putting simple little strokes on there. So I think what I'll do at this point, I will fast forward the video a little bit. So here we go. I'm now uh, sp speeded the thing up and we're whacking these lines in a little bit sharpish. And this is probably the speed you are used to seeing me paint. And oh my God, how much more confident am I now? Does make me look a better painter when it's speeded up, I have to say. So I'm just putting a few more of those lines in. And then at this point, I'm going to go back to real time again. Because I then go back in with uh, more shadow. I felt it needed a little bit more shadow on some of these rocks than um, <clears throat> I'd already got there. So I've gone from being sort of really light back to sort of... Uh, dark again. You can see I'm using the eraser there to lift the colours out. Changing the colour, adding a little bit more local colour to these rock faces, just with a, a, a splash of the brush. So I've obviously changed the brush to the um, wash brush again. I thought I'd put a little bit of blue in there. Just adding some interest of colour. So nothing like the photo, really. I'm taking a lot of artistic licence to uh, make this painting look a little bit more pleasing than the photo of a few um, clumps of rocks. So I keep zooming in and out. The reason I'm doing that is to, just to sort of... Some people flip the canvas over. Um, to see what, to look at it from a different angle. I kind of just zoom out, uh, and shrink the thing, uh, to give me an idea, make it like more like a thumbnail to give me an idea what it's looking like. So I've got the sea wash brush there. I'm going to a burnt umber color. Then I decide I need that glazing round brush. Oh no, this is where I'm going in with the rigger. Now the rigger is the really fine brush. I'm putting in those finer lines. And I'm on the, the layer which is multiply. So again, I've kind of got blending and drawing uh, going off. I, I suppose it's okay because I feel confident enough. This another reason why I don't cr create so many layers is I'm confident enough that I'm okay with what I'm doing. So I'm not too worried about damaging anything underneath. And I said I wasn't going to talk about layers anymore. So anyway, here we go with this multiply layer, uh, changing the size of the brush all the time for thick lines for those dark shadows and then thin lines for this detail. And I'm just, you see very light lines being sketched in for this rock face. There we go. And then another thing is I'm trying to do them very quick with a quick stroke. So they look confident rather than um, pencil lines, which are um, a bit hesitantly drawn. So I'm sort of making bold strokes to try and, get the impression of that cracked rock. Imagine the rock sort of cracking, it would sort of just splinter. And that's what I'm trying to do with these quick strokes. 
that I've put on with confidence. So I'm creating a new layer there, putting it to the top of the stack. It's normal. I haven't got any, um, I haven't changed the mode at all. And this is again, now I can be confident that when I put these lines in, everything underneath is going to get, um, covered. And this is because I wanted to put some more detail. If you look in the shadow area, I'm adding even more detail into that shadow area. Even though it's really dark, I still felt it needed some uh, detail of those rocks. Now I'm back on the light area face of the main rock. Putting that in. I'm just sort of jumping all over the um, rock face. Not Literally, I didn't climb up it or anything like that. Um, but I'm sort of <laughs> jumping all over the place with my pen, sketching in those, um, lines of that rock. And I imagine they would be breaking, not breaking, that's not the right word. Are they sort of carve into the, that's a better word, carve, carve into the face of those rocks. And some of them, they are a little bit more jagged. The, the ones that are sort of in the shadows and run down the sort of edge of the rocks rather than on the face of it, they seem to be a little bit more jagged and tr so I can draw them with, uh, more wavy tight lines, not wavy tight lines, but jagged sort of ragged. So I'm sort of scrubbing it with the pencil rather than, um, doing these quick strokes. So different pencil techniques going into it as well. It's not, everything's not painted with the same kind of brush stroke. I'm using different styles to uh, create different effects. There I'm sort of softening off one edge with that blending brush and then chiseling it away again with the eraser to get that nice sharp edge. So it's coming, the shapes are coming, but what I'm thinking is it's going to need some highlights at some point where the light would be catching the face of, of some of the, the, the rocks. But I'm still busy um, getting in these shadows. I felt against that um, white sky there, it needed to be a little bit darker, that rock. And uh, if I don't do it now, uh, a little bit later on, I will sort of paint almost the top of that rock in silhouette. And that's just to create a counterbalance against that light white sky. This is interesting because I'm using the eraser now, look, to draw in some crevices. So I'm, instead of painting dark over light, I'm now using the eraser to put in similar sort of textures, but this time light against the dark. And I felt that added a really nice effect, something quite different. To uh, what I'd been doing previously, just sort of zoomed out, make sure I was happy with that. So at this point, um, I go back to the uh, dark color again, and then I start painting some more um, crevices in the far left rock. And this is the point where I start to sort of just sketch in a little bit of a silhouette of the top of that rock face. And I felt that just sort of set it off nice. So I didn't, I mean, I got an idea of how I wanted this to look when it was finished, but I, but the painting took me on a path, um, to draw that out of me. I didn't know where all the brush strokes were going to go and putting on one color and one line 
then led me to add another line and create something different. So it's quite interesting the way it evolved. That's the kind of, that is the word I'm looking for. It evolved rather than me drawing it. It um, created itself. That sounds a bit kind of cheesy, really. But it was, it was like that. It was, um, I just let the lines uh, take me on a journey to produce this uh, painting, really. As I had added one line, it sort of led me onto another. And now I was sort of getting these horizontal lines going down the rocks, which led me to put some more on. And so they're not always in the photograph. Some of them are from my imagination. <clears throat> and as you can see, I mean, the actual rocks that I've painted are only similar to the rocks on the photograph. And I've got a little bit more um, ups and downs at the top of the rock. I mean, I wish I'd put that kind of little peak in the middle in there. I meant to put that in and then forgot. But my, my rocks are, I've got a little bit more shape to them going up and down to create a more interesting shape, I feel. I think at this point, I must be getting pretty close to having the... Oh no, we're going into the lighten layer now. So I create another layer, put this on the top of the stack, and set the blend mode to add. Because I wanted to really um, make these highlights pop. So rather than lighten, I used add, which really does make them stand out and sort of almost puts an halo around your brush strokes. And I used, I start off with an off yellow colour and you can see straight away, as soon as you start putting them in, it just lifts the old drawing again. So you could be doing this with coloured pencils if you were working on um, an actual watercolour or maybe gouache. You could use... Uh, a gouache to get the same effect. So nothing here that can't be done conventionally. And I really enjoyed this bit because uh, it really sort of started to pop a little bit. They were looking a little bit flat, but getting these highlights in really did make it uh, sing for me. I'm sort of following the crevices and cracks that are already there. So sort of get an eye light uh, next to a shadow. That line, I don't think I like that one. I think I take that out. Yeah, there we are. And I'm just sort of looking at the photo thinking, right, where where would the light be catching it? Let's just get that, um, get those highlights in. And I'm painting them quite strong, but later on I can use the eraser because they're on one layer. This is how the layer should be worked. I could take the eraser and there you see, I'm just using the eraser to softly lift out some of the color. So some of the lines stay in really sharp and others I knock back with the eraser. There we are, point, pencil them in, and then lift them out a little bit. I think this was my favourite bit of the, the painting that I did when I did this. Adding some more lines down the uh, middle middle foreground or the middle ground of the rocks. Just making them pop a little bit. I 
I changed the colour at some point because I want to add a bit of texture into that shadow area. And I felt I could probably do with it by uh, lifting out a little bit. You can see I was enjoying this. I was sort of go crazy with it and putting them all over the place. Yeah, there we go. I go for uh, uh, the more oak colour. I felt that was too much and lifted them out. And there we go. I knocked the opacity right down. Because I wanted to add a few highlights, but not sort of crazy bright ones in this, sh this shadow. They wouldn't be as white as they would be on other areas of the painting. I'm trying to get this kind of rough texture going off. And there was lots of sort of erasing, rubbing out, and then going back in there. Just to get that sort of textured feel, the roughness of the rock face. So I'm running the risk of overworking it at this point, I feel. So I hope I stop soon. Yeah, I thought I would be um, lifting that colour out. So I start softening off some of these edges a bit. I felt like quite a few of them were too bright and I um, soften a few off. Then I go back in and add a few more with this sort of oak colour. I could have probably uh, used a purple colour as well to add a few more lines to uh, vary it out a bit. As you can see, I really got into this, this highlights. I'm thinking I'm overdoing it a little bit now and I should stop. Please stop. It looks like I'm going to. Right, so I'm going back into darks again. I've selected the layer below the highlight layer. You see I'm putting a few shadows towards the right hand side. Just to sort of throw that um, bit of rock into shadow.
It's all looking a bit odd at the minute because we've got nothing in the foreground. So I'm going to have to think of something to um, bring that foreground really forward without distracting from the rocks being the focal point. And I think this is the point where I'm going to do this. Yeah, so I've got my C wash brush selected. I guess I'm going to go on. I've, I've chosen a layer that I've already used for um, putting washes on, but not on this part of the painting. So I'm being economical with my layers, but in a sensible way, if you know what I mean. So I'm sort of getting in some foreground with a really bright colour of this sort of bracken. It's quite a bold move. Then I use what would be a sort of burnt sienna to add a little bit of shadow underneath that. Might go even a bit darker still. You notice I've painted a diagonal that leads you into the rocks. I wasn't conscious of that when I painted that, but um, I probably do things like that without thinking these days. So I've created another layer, or have I gone back into the... You know, I think I've gone back into the um, original layer that I'd set to add. And I'm using the rigger to flick in some of this bracken, some twigs and things. Just sort of lead you. In. So you can clearly see that that is bracken and lead you into that painting or lead you into the rocks, I should say. Just flicking some, uh, the odd twig here and there. I do change the colour as well. I think you'll notice in a second or two, I will change that oak colour to the cobalt blue colour. And I, and I flick a few, flick a few twigs in with that. Here we go. There we are, the cobalt selected. I just added, but it's still lighter than the colour underneath, so it's still putting in lighter looking twigs. Just a few, and it's just to add a little bit of contrast so they're not all the same. And another thing you should notice with the grasses, they're not all pointed in the same direction, they're not all the same height, they're not all starting on the same level, some are taller, some are shorter, they've got different gaps between them. Uh, so often you'll see paint, people paint grass and they make them all the same height, at the same angle, the same distance between every blade, and that's not how it works. It, it doesn't look realistic when you've done that. So look at the mess that that is, they're sort of all, all over the place. Now I'm going in with some darker ones. So I'm on a different la uh, layer, obviously. Um, I think I created a new layer for this so that they would cover over those um, light coloured twigs as well. And I'm thinking, yeah, the orange is looking a little bit too bright. It's sort of distracting quite dramatically from the actual rocks. So I'm going to have to do something about that in a minute or two. So you see I've selected the layer with that brown on. I can't adjust the layer because I've got other colours on it. So I choose, I select the eraser, make it a big brush, and then just soften off that orange slightly. Leave it stronger right in the foreground, but 
the sort of middle distance ground I've not wiped well back. And then I choose the wash brushing again and I just put a little bit back in at the front, but nothing like it was before. And then I think I'm pretty much thinking this is finished. Let's get it signed. So I'm going to use the, I think I use the rigger. Oh no, I, go, I do use the HB pencil, which is a dark color. Not until I make a mistake and uh, try and draw it with the orange first. There we go, undo that. Change the colour to the uh, Burnt Umber. Sign it. Take one more look at it when, it's, when I've signed it. And I think the rocks are kind of falling away and it needs something just to pull that horizon in with the foreground. So this, I think this last bit, it's not much, but it's a key part of the painting. I create a new layer. I set the blend mode to um, screen. And then I flick in some more grasses. But this time, I make them quite large and cut into that horizon. Sort of fiddling around with it to start with. It took me a while to work out that that's what I needed to be doing. So I'll undo all of those. I think it's at that point I realised what I need to be doing. There we go. And that, just that one stroke there, pulls everything together. That is the bit that makes the painting work. In my opinion, anyway. So that is it. That is my How to Paint Rocks tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, big thumbs up. As always, much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Because I have lots of videos like this. And I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.